let's dive to this chemistry topic on catalytic reforming. And so far we have been talking about catalytic reforming as a single process in which you increase the quality of the gasoline from low octane to high octane gasoline. But what are the desirable reactions and undesirable reactions that you may encounter here? Well, I showed you this graph before, and this is a table to show you very fast what is the main idea of catalytic reforming. Typically, what you will want to obtain is the dehydrogenation of naphthenes to aromatics. What's this? You have a naphthene, which is nothing more than a cyclic molecule, which is not aromatic. You're going to remove hydrogen, and you're going to convert it to an aromatic compound. This is very high in octane. You also want to convert paraffins to naphthenes, a paraffin or linear paraffin, let's say this one right here. You want to convert it to a cyclic molecule. So right here, well, we don't have an example, but let's try to imagine we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And what you want to do is to convert it to this cyclic molecule. And of course, whenever there is cyclic formation, you gotta produce hydrogen gas. So that's why catalytic reforming will be producing lots of gas. Hydrogenation of all the fins to paraffins. So that's a tricky one. That is actually assumed to be the case. Typically you will have, I don't know, maybe you have these olefins or maybe more complex olefins. The main concept is that olefins are not stable, as especially if you're going to be using them in gasoline. So what you need to do is hydrogenate this material and remove this double bond right here. The hydrocyclization of paraffins to aromatics. Okay, so this is kind of tricky. You, you will have plenty of paraffins. What you want to do is form them to naphthenes, this one right here, and eventually convert it to aromatics. So technically this is a two-step process. And the most common non-desirable reactions are the alkylation of side chains of naphthenes. So let's say that you have this branchet and then you produce, I don't know, maybe this one plus this one right here. You don't want to do that because the branches help in increasing the octane rating. <clears throat> also, you're going to produce gas, which is a non, let's say we don't want to decrease the volume or density of the material. And hydrocracking is also a very common case here. So let's say you have a long molecule, you're going to break it into two main chains. That might be something, some cases it's fine, in other cases might not be fine. For instance, let's say you have a C7, you will break it to C4 plus C3 olefins. You don't want that. You want to remain with the C7 and form, if possible, a aromatic with it. And there are several proposed mechanisms. I'm not going to stop here, but you can get very technical on how paraffins convert to cyclopentane or cyclo or naphthenes, how naphthenes are converted to isoparaffins, isoparaffins to normal paraffins, crack products, and so on. I'm not going to pay that much attention. I think this is not the scope of the course, but if you're interested in that, you can click pause, verify all these, how they interact between each other. I think this is much more into organic chemistry rather than the scope of the engineering refining course. <clears throat> now, nafting the hydrogenation. Highly endothermic, meaning that you need to add heat, decreases temperature. It has the highest rate of reaction, so this is very fast. Promoted by metallic function and aromatic forms have a very high boiling point, which are very good for the gasoline. So we are going to increase the end point of gasolines. The reaction is promoted. Okay, we already know that. And some examples are, for instance, methyl cycloxane converted to toluene or dimethyl cyclopentan to toluene. Paraffin dehydrocyclation. Multiple step mechanism as stated before here, guys. Where is the, yeah, this one right here? You are going to have several steps. It has a lower rate of reaction, obviously. More steps implies lower reaction and also more movement of atoms and electrons. The hydrogenation followed by a molecular rearrangement to form naphthene. So that's interesting. First, we need to dehydrogenate the molecule and then form the cycle. 
Naphthene is typically converted to the subsequent product, which is a aromatic, let's say, benzene-containing ring. <clears throat> so you have this, isoparaffin converts to aromatic, or N-heptane converts to aromatic. Here are two examples. Recall that we have one step in between. Favorable conditions, high temperature, low pressures, low space velocity, and low hydrogen to hydrocarbon ratio. Linear paraffin isomerization promoted by acidic function. Actually, we have seen this in these cases when we produce isobutan and C5, C6, or light naphtha. But now we're going to focus on the heavier naphtha. The main idea is to produce brancher, uh, branched isomers, no heat effect, so there is no requ a strong requirements on heating or cooling, and compared to the previous one, is rapid. So one example would be N-heptane to isoheptane, which increases octane rating, and here it goes, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, into 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So this is N-exan, and you are converting this to 2, 2, dimethyl, two, three, four, put high. higher octane rating as well. High temperature, low pressures, low space velocity, and hydrogen to hydrocarbon ratio has no effect compared to this one right here. Now things, the hydroisomerization. A ring rearrangement reaction formed by alkyl cycloxane, the hydrogenate to aromatics, Octane increases significantly. Of course, whenever you produce an aromatic, there will be a huge jump on the octane rating. So this one is interesting. This is actually a little bit more complex than this one right here. This one right here is technically just the hydrogenation, but as stated here, naphthene, so you have your naphthene ring and 2-methyl. What's happening here is total rearrangement. You are producing a 6-carbon ring instead of 5, and you are producing the aromatic ring as well. Naphthene isomerization is also important, required for subsequent dehydrogenation to aromatics. So technically, this was the main step, or one previous step was the rearrangement or isomerization in order to then convert it to toluene via dehydrogenation. So this is the, the case, high risk of opening and breaking, as you can imagine here, guys. When you are translating from a five ring to a six ring, there can be breaking of the ring and you form a linear, or let's say isoparaffin. Kind of a little bit endothermic and, well, here is an example. Alkyl cyclopentane converts to alkyl cycloxane. So this is actually pretty similar to this one right here. We have Two methyl branches, here we have a ethyl branch. So what we are doing here is, okay, we have five carbon rings here, six carbon rings here. I want to take advantage of this carbon in order to form the six carbon branch. And instead of having an ethyl branch, we're going to convert it to a methyl branch. Now, why do we want to do that? Because then it's easier for us to dehydrogenate it and then convert it to a aromatic. And here are examples of the cyclo molecules, propane, butane, pentane, and hexane. Okay, those were the reactions that we want to get, but there are many reactions that can happen. Hydrocracking, hydrogenolysis, hydrodealkylation, further alkylation, transalkylation, and coking. So right now I don't have the specific data, but hydrogenolysis is typically when we have the destruction of the ring. Hydrodealkylation is when you convert, let's say, an alkyl into a lar longer chain. Further alkylation is maybe you just wanted to form an alkyl branch and with the help of, I don't know, maybe an olefin, you produce a longer chain, which will have a lower uh, octane rating. And transalkylation, maybe you have this one right here and you are changing it to something similar like this. So you don't want to produce that. Now, of the ones that we're going to cover is coking. Coking is a very complex group of chemical reactions that eventually cause formation of this black dust or solid material. It's linked to heavy unsaturated products such as polynuclear aromatics, traces of heavy olefins, 
and the olefins can promote coking. A well, high feed of FVP favors coking. Poor feed distribution in the reactor promotes coking flavor by high temperatures. So that's what you want to avoid. And hydro cracking is also what we want to avoid. We don't want to be breaking long chains. This is achieved via exothermic reactions. They are slow, yet can happen. And the main problem here is that they will consume hydrogen. So let's say we have this molecule, we break it, but remember that these have negative charges. So hydrogen must go here in order to neutralize that. That will be something similar to having, let me do it here. So you have three carbon chains and you break them. This is the hydrogen. You will end up with the same hydrogens you have, a negative charge, and the same street for this one right here. So what happens here is that hydrogen molecule must go here and here to close the ring. Produces light gases, as you can see here, leads to coking as well, causes our high paraffinic concentration in the feed. So if you have a high paraffin material or feed in the light, sorry, heavy nafta, you must ensure the correct treatment of these materials. Farwell conditions are high pressure and high temperature. So you gotta avoid typically high temperature. I don't know if you remember, let, let's check out. Most of the processes do not require uh, either low pressure or low temperature. So you just gotta ensure that you do not achieve the conditions for cracking. 